it's time to die I'm front line when it's time to ride yeah. And if you try to hurt me, you might We gon' make a move like fire yeah. I'm alive till it's time to die Yes, sir. Hey, how y'all good people doing? Hi. All right, thanks for coming out. Okay. What's going on? How y'all doing? How are you? Who we got over here? Elite Manor. Elite. Well, welcome to the party, man. We're glad to have y'all. Thanks for coming out. He leave learners in the building. Hey, no chick. Fellas, fellas. All right. Appreciate y'all, man. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for having me, my dude. What we got in the building over here? How you doing? Good, good. The elite learning set up. Everybody got their own little setups out here. Providing what they can for the people in the neighborhood. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Yes. Want to put something up on our wall? Yes, I do. I'm going to come right back and put something up. What do I need to do? What do I need to write down and put up? What do you think that the community needs to hear? All right. When you think about it, I got no cards. What y'all think the community needs to hear? How long do you want to go with Kyle for like Gentlemen, how y'all doing? Peace, peace. Thanks for coming out. Appreciate you. Thank Oh, yeah. Yo, peace and blessings. How you doing? Good, man. Good. Rod, the hot rod is in the building. Okay, huh? Talk to the peoples. Uh, we're out here right now trying to show our support, make sure she knows that you know they're not alone. We provide resources and services, and you know to, to be here in a time of unity. You know, it's a difficult time. It's an important tragedy. We hope you again, but, you know, we, we are here. We're, we're here you, Brown, Thank you. Thank you. Hey, how you doing? How y'all feeling? Thank you for coming out. Got the good people from Rise in the building. Well, they got a few, a few offerings for the community if y'all need something. I'm about to go to the outlet. Peace and blessings. How y'all doing? Thanks for coming out. Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen. One more time. All right. We got the good figures out here. Fall. Ready to get y'all loaded up with the nutrients, the sustenance. How y'all doing? Gonzalez in the building. How y'all doing? Girl, I don't remember. Can I get uh, some uh, 
the mask. They have to come sign in. No, I was here, but I didn't get the mask. I thought I, thought I had got a box of masks. You signed oh, in you already? Signed in already? Yeah, sure. Okay. I remember you either. God bless you. Right, let's go. Good afternoon. Thank you all so much for coming out today. Uh, my name is Hayley Alasco, and I'm the director of the RISE Project. We're an extension of the New York City Crisis Management yeah. System, offering DV-related support, domestic violence, intimate partner violence-related support, and working to prevent intimate partner homicide, intimate partner violence, intimate partner gun violence. So I just want to thank everybody so much for coming out today. We are here to heal as a community. As we all know, we did witness, feel a tragedy here in this community, but at the same time, we are here to extend our love to all those affected. We all affected and just wanted to come here and love to just really be here to really care about one another and show that as a community, we can really make a difference for each other. And this is not, we're not just here one day. We need to have this sustained, so we will be here. Um, so I just want to let everybody know that we're all here. Um, all the organizations, I just want to thank everybody for being a partner. So we have Elite Learners here. We have Vivo, Brownsville and Violence Out. We have Brownsville Think Tank Matters. We have the Brooklyn District Attorney's Office. We have Warm, the Farm, the Rice Project here for anyone who needs support. If anybody needs some therapeutic um, support as well, we have the, the HEAT team from the, the Department of Mental Health and Hygiene. Uh, so, and the Brownsville Community Justice Center as well, BCJC, our partners. We have Legal Aid. We have Tess and Chase Corps. We wanted to make sure that we were going to be out here today to heal as a community, like I mentioned before, but also offer resources and support for those who may need. There's also man ups out there as well, so I just wanted to shout you all. Thank you so much for coming and supporting us. Thank you. Um, we will be here. So the agenda today, we did start this re these resources here. Um, at 5 o'clock, we will be having a vigil where we will be doing a prayer for the community. So I really encourage you all to stick around for that. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you for, for that as well. Oh, also, Matt, the mayor's office. Thank you so much for coming out today. Um, there are a few words from our council member, Alika Samuels. Um, so, thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Haley. So, as I'm standing here, I don't really know what to say because I feel like we are at this position in this moment a lot in our community. And it's a hard place to be because we are always, always, always struggling. It didn't start during the pandemic. It didn't start a year before the pandemic. Brownsville has been neglected as a community for decades. But what I'm looking at right here reminds me of the motto that Jocko used to say all the time, hope is inside, right? And what that means, hope is inside, is that everything that we need is right here already inside of our community. So all the organizations, all the people that work at these organizations, everyone that shows up in time of need to heal as a people, as a community, it's already within us. It, it comes from inside. And I just wanted to point that out. And Haley's standing here right now, and I want to say condolences to you, right? This is your first day back, right, at work. We're struggling as a people, right? We Every day, we thank God for just being able to wake up, right? But when we come outside, we hurting, right? I lost my mom since been four months. Right? How many people out here lost somebody near and dear to them during a pandemic and again before that to gun violence, right? domestic violence, mental health? The other day, we all came together because a nine-year-old baby girl from our community had to experience her entire family being wiped out. Right? That's the reality of what happened the other day. But in March of 2018, we was right here when Ms. Green walked into her house in Riverdale, right? And saw her husband, her two sons, and her two year old granddaughter dead right down the block. Triple murder suicide. That's nothing new to our community. 
In that same year, we had a drive by Marcus Garvey, right? And on that day, the other day when we were out here, at 10.44, a young woman was running down Rockaway and got shot. That was the same day. Later on that evening, I got a text message about another young woman getting shot by Brevoy, Ralph and Bainbridge, right? The night before the triple murder suicide, we heard about a five-year-old getting grazed, right? This is nothing new. We all hurting. And for everybody that's out here, every single organization, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. But you need help too as individuals. We all need to be sitting on somebody's couch talking. We all need to be sitting on somebody's couch talking to somebody. Because we are hurt. This is traumatic. We show up every single day with everything that we have to be there for everybody else. But when you go home, you crying in the shower, right? Or you get on Zooms and you wilding out, right? We got some real mental health issues going on as a community that we need to address. We have to address guns, right? We have to address gang violence. We have to address domestic violence. But the only way to do that is if we are whole. You can't come to the table, you can't help your people if you just a half a person. And I just wanted to touch on that part because I beg each and every one of you as organizations, as providers, please get the help that you need too because we need you to be healthy, straight up. I love each and every one of you. But the only way for us to come together as a community is for us to be our best self and for us to really, truly, 100% work together. It's so hard for me to give funding. The little piece of funding that we do get in this community, it's so hard to explain that. Like, I be out there to straight begging folks. I can't stand begging for anything because we deserve it, right? But it's hard when we out here fighting each other. We look real crazy to the administration when it looks like we can't even come together. But I know that hurt people hurt people, right? We understand that concept, but I just beg you to get the help that you need so you can be your best self as well. So again, I love you, I thank you, and we're gonna get through this together as a community. So thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for your heartfelt words, council member. So, and I, the council member just mentioned something that was very deep, where it's just like, we cannot, we have to be whole before we help other people. So I know this, I don't want to stop anybody from the fair, and I want everybody to continue to enjoy everything and never, you know, just, you know, wait for, you know, wait around and get the services that we need and come back together around the vigil. But during that time, I understand that we're still in a pandemic and we're still social distancing, but take the opportunity to get to know each other. What are, who are the people behind the masks that are in these organizations that are here to help you, right? And so let's tell one another, since we can't give each other a hug, right? Let's say that we love each other. Like, say, hi, I love you. You know, just, I don't have to know you to love you. I just want to be here to make sure you're safe. So that's what I'll leave you all with right now while we're all here mingling and getting the services that we need, just making sure that we're whole to help one another and saying that we love you. So I love you all and we all love you. And that's why we're all here together. So thank you. See you again in a little bit. All right. Thank you. Love you, Haley. Where my son at? Come in, come out. And I know y'all see me running the streets all the time and I just be with my staff, but this is why I go hard to y'all. This is my sweet baby boy who's only 14 years old, born and raised in Brownsville.
Only thing, the only thing we missing right now is the DJ, Mr. Scott. That's right. That's right. We ain't supposed to go from that to dead end. We need to let the people know we out here. We out here. We got a big fan base. We got a big fan base. When you go online, you see us. That's what I'm saying. We got a big fan base, my man. Well, I just went on, though. You yeah. know? You see, yeah. the, pe the people not out? No. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's just us out here. Yeah. Yo, we need all y'all to come out, man. Share this. Spread the word. Let them know that we out here, out here, right here, right now. That's right. Van Dyke Community. Van right Dyke here. Community Center, 392 Blake. Blake. Right. Mr. Scott, you already know. That's right. One of the elders, one of the seniors from, right. from, from the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. What's the name of your other organization? DYCD. We give out summer job youth, and we give out programs, and we give out money to organizations like the ones you see out here now. We give out funding. So as long as they use their money the right way, they will get that funding. Okay? So if you have a board, make sure you contact the mayor's office. Tell you want to do the DYCD program. And you can contact it then, and we will come to, to come to a vote on what you get. I think I'm gonna have to get in contact with them because I want to do some more. I want we need to do more for the community. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. All right, let's see. Um, who am I highlight? I was gonna run up on somebody on this side. Yo, so we're gonna be out here till 7 p.m. Vigil is going to start at 5 p.m. Make sure y'all come out. They got, you know, sanitizer, masks, all kind of other assistance that you might need. All kind of organizations is out here. Make sure y'all come out. Press share on that. Spread the word and tell them right here, right now. There's even food and vegetables out here. But most importantly, we coming together, unifying for the, the behind. You know what I mean? The murder homicide, the homicide that just took place the other day with a little nine-year-old girl had to call in after her whole family was murdered. Right here. Van Dyke. So. Bottom line. All for one, one for all. This is Sonny. Sonny is one of the leaders of the Brownsville and Stat team. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> What's up, lady? <laughs> how you doing? Welcome to the forties. Good to see you. It's been a while. Oh, so, what they doing over here is they having people write down on index cards what they feel Brownsville needs to help. What do you need to help? What do we need to help? What does the Phil need to help? Let me show y'all a few of these uh, ideas. Continue to show up and be on call. Mentor, keep guns out of the community. Mentorship again. No Be a support to those in need of someone. Be available. United we stand, divided we fall. Unity is community. Hold yourself accountable and hold others accountable too. Eat to live, love healthy food, calm settings, patience, support, honest resources, love and direct action. Self-awareness. ASAP like Rocky, mental health assistance. That's big. Somebody to listen. Safety. Of course, what we're gonna do without God. Nice heart to heart dialogue, self-care. And we gotta all come together. No one man can do this by himself or herself.
nice day. Even if somebody think of something and they comment it on the live, let me know. I'll write it on the card for y'all. Get it in. So even though y'all might not be here, we can still take down your valuable input. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? We doing I'm good. I'm oh, we, I'm live on Facebook right now. I need what? you to talk to the people. What? See now, What's this is what on? we need in the NYPD. That type of energy. Not to mention, you also know we got to be the change we need. So That's all of y'all cheerleaders on the sideline, Listen, get involved. Let me tell you, I like to be the change in the neighborhood. Not some of these. Other people that come in and don't know how to talk to people. That's not a that's not a hazard of the job. That's just who those people are. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, so we need people like us in our neighborhood on the other side to do the right thing. That NYPD. That's why I'm out here. I think I'm trying to tell y'all, you, man. Hey. Oh. oh I'm bugging. <laughs> I'm bugging. Hey. So I'm out here trying to hand out these flyers so people like us can join so we can make the change instead of talking about it and just fighting against Bodegas, restaurants, police department, everything. All of that's open for any of us, anybody, any of y'all. And it's only going to change the more of us get involved. Listen, lawyers, judges, lobbyists, ADA, we need all of those. People from our because if we don't change the law and the law that are for us, they're going to continue to be in front of us. So that's the change that we need. Let's do it. Let's do it. Get involved. Absolutely. Save lives. Dig up your community and get some good money and benefits. Absolutely. Can I give you one? I mean, you know, I, we got some books, some Lego um, comic books. All right, I'm gonna put them in the comments. I'm supposed to give this to a kid. You know, I'm a Leo, man. I'm about to keep this for myself. <laughs> you see me looking at it. I'm about to like, keep that for myself. Actually, I may take it for my yeah, Lego comic, Lego books. Got a couple yeah, yeah, of yeah. young ones. Let me get a flyer too. I got one. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let me get a flyer too. We're gonna spread the word. Listen, we I was just picking up the what is it called the cadet? The cadet. Oh, listen. I know they hiring too. The oh, they, they're program, taking young ones in right now. Program. I'm so glad we brought that up because my title is I am the auxiliary coordinator. And auxiliaries are people that come in and volunteer their time to patrol their community because they care about their community and they're always taking people in. Always. You get a $425 stipend every year. All you have to put in is $144 hours for the year. That's only 12 hours a month. You can literally do no, like one to two hours a month to volunteer. Oh, and then the today is like, make sure. The young people are out there having a good time and not getting hurt. That's what it's about. Setting a good example. Providing some of that mentorship that we just was talking about. <laughs> You're here without a person, you're in Brownsville? No, so I'm actually saying I always can't say I'm thinking about it. 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 I'm thinking Jones. Right, Officer Jones, right, y'all probably, I'm going to get close so y'all can see those baby browns. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you for, thank you. My name is Sonny Brown. Okay. Yeah, I'm a reporter artist. Oh, okay. I'm with the Brownsville um, stakeholders in the Brownsville houses as well. I'm from Langston Hills. Okay, I'm Langston Hills. I don't know if you're familiar with your mouth. No, I'm just say something a little. Like, say, Officer Jones, how are you? Okay. okay. Officer Jones, yo, he got some baby girls. Listen, got some baby we girls. Books. We passing out some flyers. So we want people to join the department who want to be a change agent. Yeah. Listen, you can join the department. Thank you. A little bit of both. We were just talking about the cadet program. I'll let y'all build. <laughs> 
she was talking, right? And she sent me all the toys, and I was like, I just sent a link. So whenever she said, like, yo, that's a good one, I sent a link. I felt like I was the guy who's typing the words that come up on the TV screen. I was like, okay, in my mind, I was like, all right, when I don't really say this, I'm going to say that. Can I say back to <laughs> it was awesome. No, you're the great. Interview now. Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing? Hello, how are you doing? We I'm want good. to. Who yeah. are you guys out here representing? Well, oh, New York Health and Hospital City Trace. Um. Health and Hospital. There we go. City Trace. Um, Y'all keeping track of everybody with the vid? Not really tracking. What we're doing is arranging vaccine appointments, and that's what we want to. My job is to get people covered. We believe in vaccination is a way to keep us alive. One of the ways to keep us alive. We have not been represented enough in getting coverage. We were left to the sidelines, and I feel that it's my community duty to help in getting people appointments to get vaccinated. Mm, gotcha. So y'all signing up people for vaccination? Yes, we have vaccine appointments available for this location uh, this Sunday. And, and they're actually doing vaccinations at the Van Dyke Community Center? Yes. And we also have vaccination sites close to here at 127 Pennsylvania Avenue and uh, at okay. those are local. Yeah, I was hearing about that on the news. Well, we appreciate you guys. Thank you so for coming out. I definitely out. want to make people to know, please sign up. Please, you know, if they see anybody in the yellow, in the orange, or the blue, get covered. Tell your moms, tell your grandmother, tell your friends, cousins. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, pretty much. So, we basically have to do the same thing. Oh. 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 You got your box of masks? Come right here. The table right there. I just be wearing two. I said I just be wearing two. You don't got the black over there? No. You already know we got that purple people power. The purple people power over here. This is my team. You know this is a lot of ladies that need some more men on the team with me. No more testosterone. I'm not saying I get bullied. These are some nice ladies, some of the nicest ladies I know. But we need the opinions of everybody represented out here. Get involved, get involved. Thanks, Chief. Appreciate yeah, you, you know, man. I like the purple too. More, 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 more than anything, we I'm loving what it represents, man. Right. Team. I don't know if you're familiar with the BCJC. No, no. We're a brand new organization that we pretty much come out and support the neighborhood. We work in conjunction with the, um, the, the MES team, the MAP team, and Scott. So my name is Orlando Ross. I'm going to find some of my seconds. She's on the way to speak. Um, you can have it. You can have it. I'm going to give it. Uh, yeah, no, you can give it. Mr. Um, Orlando. How are you doing? Mr. So Orlando she's Russell. Right now, she's going to be going to speak. Okay. So she's, she's really about, you know, making sure that gun violence is not an issue 
and that it's going down. We need to have these kids to have opportunities to go out to the camps and doing different things like that so that they're not hurting each other. And then there's always a, there's a vision, there's a plan, and there's a purpose for each one. Absolutely so, right. Peace and blessings. We appreciate you coming out. And providing the support that y'all all, man, definitely needed. And that, uh, a lot of times, they consider some of this, even though I know it's not the bottom, they consider it's the bottom. They figure it's hard to get to the top. But when y'all people come through to the neighborhood and help bridge that gap, it makes it that much easier. And you know what I mean? We're here, we're here to appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yes, She's on her way right now. I'm just looking for her and see what she's doing. All right. Be able to speak to her we got a little time. Hopefully, this rain don't happen. But I think it's gonna. Oh, I think it's gonna work with us. We out here for a good cause. Okay, let me get involved. Uh, try to speak to the brothers and sisters. Peace and blessings. Peace, my brother. Peace. What organization y'all out here with today? And yeah, I'm a man up, brother. Let us know exactly why y'all felt it was important to come out. Listen, man, a tragedy in one community is a tragedy in every community, brother. We just out here to show some support, show love to everybody, man. That's what we need nowadays, a lot of love and support from every community, man. But that's yeah. why we out here, you know. Got gotcha. you. Now, have our boots on the ground and lend our love and support to our Brownsville neighbors, man. It's appreciated and felt. Definitely, and, brother. Definitely. Yeah, man, definitely, y'all dudes doing a good thing, man. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. Keep going strong. Peace and blessings. Peace, peace. Oh, it look like we got a chef in the building. Yeah, we do. We do. Look like it's a chef over here. I gotta come in. Chef boy, I'll be right there. I gotta come and highlight him. Peace and blessings, chef. Thanks, my brother. How you doing? All wise and civilized. Excellent. What's your name and who you out here representing? Andre Gamble representing Elite Knights, Elite 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 Learners, and Elite Elite Knights. Elite Learners, Elite Knights. I gotta step back because the chef is he he's unveiling the food. I don't want to get too close. But you see what he about to do. But look at that back there, Vic. It's about to happen back here. We're going to touch back in with him in a little bit. Once he once he fire up this propane, we're going to touch back in with him. All right. Let me make it rounds one more time. Right. I realize that How you good people doing? What's going on, man? Just wanted to come holler at y'all. Good. good to see you. Good to see you. Likewise, the feeling is mutual, man. I appreciate it. Can you let the people know exactly who y'all out here representing and why y'all felt it was important to come up? Uh, sure, I guess. Um, uh, well, I'm uh, representing a few projects, but the RISE project. So the RISE project works at the intersection of gun violence and intimate partner violence and domestic violence. So we're out here because we just want to raise awareness around gun violence that's related to intimate partner violence and help people connect to resources, help people who are having struggling with those issues um, get connected to support before so we can prevent incidents like what what happened. And for those not here that may need your assistance and your skill sets, how could they get in touch with your organization? They, we, we got information we're over there. You can follow us on Instagram at, at Rise NYC, Rise Project NYC, sorry. Excellent, excellent. Appreciate it. Definitely a valuable service and something that's needed all around, man. Thank you guys for coming out and being a part of today. Take it easy. Hey, lady, you got a minute for me? Oh, nah, they bumping. Sorry, sorry. Trey. All right, hey, how you doing? <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get y'all. I'm just about to come and speak with you, ladies. Let me get a little closer. All right, I see you ladies out here representing. I just wanted to come and ask you guys who you out here representing and why you felt it was important to be out here today. Well, we represent the King County District Attorney's Office, Victim Services Unit, and we work with people who experience domestic violence, domestic violence, and intimate partner violence. And we work with social workers, and we're trying to get back to the Appreciate you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Now, I told you they had the nutrients, nutritious vittles out here, fruits and veggies. And we got the good brother from far. Y'all guys out here till, till, until everything's gone or until about seven? Yeah. All right. So if they come and check y'all, they're going to they gonna need a bag. Y'all yeah, got bags for them? All right. Excellent. Everything you need to stay clean, to stay safe and healthy, 
Yeah, I mean, come on up. And like I told y'all, we out here till about seven o'clock. We started at three. About five o'clock, we're gonna stop for the vigil. Five o'clock, they're gonna stop for the vigil, and then we might get back into this until about seven p.m. Rest in peace to everybody that we lost out here in Van Dyke over the past couple of days, as well as the legend DMX, man. Pull up on you guys, Brownsville and Val and Sal. We appreciate y'all coming out. Just wanted to ask you exactly why you felt it was needed that you guys come out today. I felt that it was needed because we're the community. Ain't nothing without ain't community without community, right? <laughs> You're right about that. Right. And it's you definitely got to be able to lean on each other at times absolutely, like this. Absolutely. I think in all times. Good times, bad times. Good time. I was saying that. Good times, yeah. bad times, in between times. Right. That's we right. do it, we do it. With most families, they do it like that anyway. And we got to extend exactly. that to the community. We all go, we go through uh, trials and tribulations as family, and that's what we do. We all fight, but you know what? We get back. Yes, ma'am. Appreciate you, and thanks Thank for coming you. out. It's colorful out here, B. United Colors of Brownsville, eh? Yo. Why you coming over here? It's the United Colors of Brownsville, man. It's colorful out here. Set him down, but I'm shut. Yo, rest in peace to the dog, Dark Man X. 
Why they turned it down? What happened? Why they stopped it? What happened? Why you let them do that, man? <laughs> I put an attitude. Oh, yeah, the music just got gone. Until somebody speak, then they need to keep them beats. Sweet. Yeah, that rain trying to come though. Who got umbrellas? Who got over here? Who got over here? Real chicken. That look good. They just give it out away to me. I seen him. He's setting up the propane tank. He got the corn on right now. I see he brought out some fryers. If that rain on, he can't turn that fryer on with the rain coming back. Oh, they put one up. They put one up. They put one up. Getting thick out here, I'm into the tomb. <laughs> about to have to shut this down. My arm getting tight. You ain't working. <laughs> Happening by the speak again. What time are we at? Almost five. Almost. Another 20 minutes or so. My wife, please. The site that I went to was um, facilitated by the Air Force and FEMA. So, Hi, bro. How was it? Great, man. Amazing. It looked good. It takes some. Yo, he doesn't know what B triple C is. He knows I'm at it. You know, I don't leave out the house on an empty stomach. I'm going to take some with me. <laughs> Yo, you see this black-owned business? Rethink. Rethink everything. Man. Rethink your health. Rethink nutrition. Rethink black and brown business. Rethink entrepreneurship, man. I'm about to take some of this. Grilled chicken with pico de gallo. I don't even know what that is. I'm about to get the chef to explain it to me. Pico so, de gallo. Pico de gallo is like a mix of tomatoes, onions, and like lime juice. It's like a, it's like a Spanish thing that they put on tacos. Yeah. I've got to get some of these things. Mm, I don't know if i got a carry bag in my bag. I got the drone in there. I can't stuff no food in there. Nah, it's, it's wrapped too, so it's going to be good. Right. I'm gonna still grab a plastic bag though. I ain't having my hands full. I'll be back. Oh, here we go. 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 Oh, you can't see the whole message, but it says don't shoot when the door closed. Nah, I mean. Brooklyn Strong out here. Brooklyn Strong out here. What's happening over here? What are they doing?
Yeah, everything over here is with us. Yeah. What, what, what I'm doing is uh, the car is double park, it's triple park. Yeah. So we're going to have to make room. We're going to have to move from here and here, or uh, just try to uh, back up on the side of the street. Yeah, I think they're going to need us to do something about the triple park. Not this, though. Mm -hmm. They ain't messing with this. It's about the regular clock. It's just something again, right? What? It's going to be an issue because it's a triple park. Now. I know, but they're not going to mess with this, though. This is a man, this is a man bit. It's man uh, bit. <laughs> it's I mean, they could still end up leaving that, but then this is this will end up being the only thing triple park. So everything yeah, yeah, behind y'all, yeah. everything in front, yeah. if y'all know who no, these no, people no. are. Um, let me just ask. See, when you don't see somebody making the moves, then you gotta just get in touch. Got the homie from News Twelve. I be seeing him do his thing. I had a feeling I would catch up with him eventually. Somebody <laughs> Is my life still on? I think I'm about to. I think my live is still live, but I'm about to dead my live. I know there's a few cars that are triple parked. So you can you can double park. I don't think being double parked is too much of an issue, but there's some cars that are blocking all the traffic. So if your cars are one of them, please help us and we try to go down the block a bit. Triple park is a little difficult. Thank you. shut it down major moves major moves only we are here to 7 p.m fresh air tell a friend to tell a friend come on out get some good resources come help support the community all for one one for all out here come through I'm part of the BCJC, Brother Community Justice and Normal Life, Brother State Conference. Yeah, I'm out here on the ground. I'm out here. This is my neighborhood. I got a lot of love for the neighborhood, regardless of what a lot of our neighborhoods done turned into. I remember the love that, that's filled in and the, the good people that's there. Definitely looking to get that back. So we, we call it a heat team from New York City Department of Health. Uh, heat stands for Health Engagement Assessment Team. So, Anybody out there need any kind of services, mental health, um, domestic violence, any kind of help you can imagine, call 188-NYC-WELL. 
That's one eight 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 N Y C Well. One eight 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 N Y C Well. Utilize it, man. You're twenty four seven. You can call them anytime. Word up, man. Don't be too proud. There's been a lot of times I see the people, the good people come out and do good things for good people. And people don't, they might be a little hesitant to take advantage of the resources and that help that's out there. Yeah. You don't have to be, man. Right. Come on now. That's why they everybody, out there. Everybody needs help, man. Everybody needs support. And a lot of our families, unfortunately, are dysfunctional. You know, sad to say, but it's the truth. It's reality. A lot of us come from broken homes, impoverished homes. And we don't have people to talk to. So, you know, sometimes you might just need to reach out, man. You know, put your pride to the side and get some help, man. You know, and help don't mean that you're weak. Help means that you're strong. Because you identify that you need some, you need, you need some, some, some support to help you get to the next level in your life. So, peace and blessings to everybody. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. I'm gonna show y'all one thing before I get out of here. Lose 12 in the building. Before I shut this down, cause I'm gonna go ahead and film some other joint for my other network, the News Slash Network. Hope this mask ain't looking soaking wet, man. Crazy. Anyway, this is big business out here. It's really happening, it's really going down. So News 12 just pulled up. I won't have to do all of the heavy lifting. Cause they in the building. I'm just here to get on the mic. Yeah. Cool. Addressing the community at all? Yeah, sure. All right. All right. I guess that's settled. On the mic. We got yeah. Tell me, this is Chloe. Chloe Hi, this is how are you? Yeah. Right, so if you want to talk to me, you just need to stand up at the front so that when they're passing the mics around, you're holding up here. Okay. Are they doing that way? You're more than welcome. Uh, I think they're going in a few minutes, so I can call you over one time. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. I appreciate that. All right. Thank you. And then if there's anybody else, uh, how like five, seven minutes? Uh, yeah, probably about five, ten minutes. Yeah, I was actually about to shut the live down. Still want to do it? Restart it, or you want to keep it going? I think they got the just a bit. We got just about everybody that I believe that's going to end up coming out here. The main focus was to get it on there, let people see it, let people click share, tell some people, like, yo, y'all did it? That's, that's done.
<laughs> they doing it right out of late learn this bitch. I'm going to have to give me an arm hoodie, bitch. <laughs> See, your kids should have been out there. They got a table and everything. They got the old, the heated floors. Got to take my shoes off. Damn right. Rest in peace, the dog man X. The dark man. Peace and bless. Um, there's one on Rockaway, and we also got one on Belmont. One, the one on Rockaway is for Van Dyke. One on Belmont is for Brazil Houses. Unfortunately, it's not one of us for every project out here, but a few more for a lot of, I think about 17 housing developments throughout the city. I had one in there one time, they helped me out. Well, definitely, I mean, um, you got to yeah, They're pushing the direction, whatever resources it is that you might need. Even right now, if you know some young ones, up until the age of 24, ready to do that, get that some of you. It's happening yeah. right now. They got about 250 slots left. Yeah. Yeah. Going yeah. live yeah. until about the end of the month. Yeah. They could they could apply here. They could go to hoodsafety.org and apply. Um, some of the information is up in the building, but the, the flyers is up on the on the glass as well. Appreciate. Was here with some DMX. Oh, I, it's not going to be his last one either. <laughs> my guy wants to start his own. Oh, yeah? 
He wants a starting he got, lineup. He, got, he, do, he do look like he got the ball Marley jeans. Good <laughs> job, baby. We got the forward and the shooting guard. Legends in the community. Which community? All community, not the, the community. <laughs> The community, the communities, oh, the village, the village. Yeah, yeah. How you doing, brother? Look at yourself, bro. Right now. Is that anyone you want to wait online? This is a one. Shit, this is a one. We really eat one. Now, now it's like I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna say this hot line right here. This is it. Yo, look, the line is formulating. The chef don't put the call out. Chef, don't put the call out. They ain't playing either. They jumped on it. I think I'm going to have to go get me a bag or something. You go snatch me up one of these bags. Can I get a bag? Any color? Uh, let me get black. Thank you. No. Do I need to sign up? No. This is for uh, organizations that are tabled. So you don't have to sign. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right. See, let me show you how y'all do this. We are at these events. You get a bag, and then you make the rounds. This bag's not big enough for veg fruits and veggies, but, you know, we're going to come over here and get some of this good food. Yeah, some chicken, some yellow rice. Yeah, I'm glad I came because the other table was full the last time I was here. Uh, you know, we hungry out here. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. which, when, which one is the, they both the same? They right? own chicken, yellow yeah. beans. With the people the guy up. Yes. I was over here talking to the chef, so I already, go. I got the menu. Go. Look, this one's nice and wrapped. Here you, go. you got another one that's wrapped? Uh, yeah. Thank hey, you. Hey, Miss Eric, got us some all right, we just picked up some good eats. I think I'm going to go run and grab some hand sanitizer or something. Oh, you know what it is? Um, let y'all see what's happening over there. Bad job. I'm tripping. I was grabbing some uh oh, about to step on a kid. Let me show y'all what the kids out here doing. We got a yes, we do got a couple of kids out here. They're getting busy with the chalk. You know, we got a little something for everybody. Don't even don't even try to make an excuse. Just come out. Yeah, we got more than enough chalk, so bring them out. You know what I mean? No. Uh oh. The door grabber. This oh, thing is sticky. That is. I know. I, I might have to Why is this thing sticky? Only because I seen somebody talking about it on TV. They had a metal one they was advertising. The door grabber. It's these things here. Oh, it's regular buttons. Grab me the stylus pen. <laughs> Swag. <laughs> oh, that's good too, cause this bag is full. This look like the only one left. The only one. 
We're about to start the video in, the, in about a minute. So I'm just asking. Oh. Cameras you know all I'm over saying? the place. I'm grabbing you know, swag. Hand sanitizer. Yeah. Yeah. Let's make some budget. Turn this on me, so on me. I'm saying I'm grabbing swag. You know what I mean? They got the fruits and vegetables out here. They got food out here, sanitizer, masks, okay, okay, and most importantly, we out here rallying for the community, man. Right? So unfortunately, as you all know, the community has experienced a climate event earlier this week. And I know that we all heard it. And this is a moment where we've seen the intersection of gun violence and domestic violence take place. And we know that these are conversations that need to happen. Intimate climate violence, domestic violence is something that we don't typically talk about. It's something that's private. It's none of our business. We don't want to get involved, right? But this right here shows us we need to get involved. We need to have a conversation. We need to talk about this. So I am very happy that we are all here today to come together as a community to heal and to show love, to show one another, another love. So I hope that we all did that little exercise that I was telling everybody before. Right after the council members spoke, so I very high, you know, I love you. You know, I gotta know you can love you because it's what we need today. So I, I'll keep it very brief. I just want to reintroduce myself to you all. Um, if anyone does need any, any intimate part of violence or domestic violence related support, the violence project is here, right here. So um, we are giving out. If you want to have to get involved and say, okay, I would love to talk about this in the part of violence and bring it to my community, but I don't know how, we have support. How can you be a protective bystander and do a safety? We can support you with that. Um, as well as identifying the signs. So we can help you do that as well. So I want to thank all the partners that are here today, but we are going to start this video now, so we can enter the prayer and we'll hear from all the wonderful organizations that are here today as well as our elected officials. So I will bring up Pastor Belton to open us up in prayer. Thank you so much. <laughs> Before we pray, I just want to applaud the community, all those who are represented here today. Thank you for coming to support. But we should not just gather at times when there's a loss. We should gather so that we can forget this. Coming together, sitting and talking with each other, understanding domestic violence, understanding gun violence, and how it affects and impacts our community. As pastor First Baptist Church of Brownsville, uh, I am right in the middle of it. And it's, it saddens me each time I hear of someone or some child, some mother, some daughter, some son, some father who lose their life to senseless violence. Let us come together, stand together. We are better together than we are against each other. Can we pray? O oh God, who makes all things new, speak to us as a whole people today. May your truth touch not just the our intellect, but also the yearning of the heart and soul. Bring with us, we bring with us our daily concerns, as well as our more internal questions. God, we trust in your power, even as it is all things our in your wisdom, even as it expressed in seeming foolishness, in your holiness as it comes to us amid brokenness. We do not, we do not ask this day for dazzling displays of strength, electrical exercise of intellectual prowess, or marvelous manifestations of your miracle. We come simply to worship you. Be with us, Lord as we are together here to worship you. Help us not to check our, our mind or our hearts at the door, but enable us to bring all that we are to you so that we might experience this touch upon all aspects of our life. It is in your name we do pray. Amen. Amen.
At this time, I have the honor of bringing up a similarly woman, a huge woman, a great friend of mine, a young lady that's doing awesome stuff, not only here in our community, but statewide. So come on, let's put our hands together. So good afternoon again. Good evening. God bless. We are back at this again to live through another incident of senseless and tragic gun violence within our community. And this one is different because this one talks about so many of our community issues that we are all dealing with at the same time. When this incident took place, I was in South Carolina burying my cousin who we suspect is also another woman who died at the hands of her husband. And so we might suffer in silence, but today we say it to all of the people of Van Dyke Houses and the larger Brownsville community that we hear you, we love you, we see you, we are here for you. We had to come home to come together again in order to denounce the tragedy that took place. But this is a situation that so many of us may just be a paycheck away from. I remember situations where having to go through a family situation where their nine-year-old was having a birthday. And y'all know what it is, family. When it comes to birthdays and birthday parties, you got to show up and show out as men. You hear me? And your baby moms, your wife, your significant other, she ain't trying to hear a lot of the stories that a lot of people come up with. And so sometimes that level of stress can become so unbearable. There's something about emotions. There's something about relationships that you will be in that will nobody will make you as upset than that person that you love. And not just the men, the women too. But we have to recognize and really deal with and speak to the rise about how do you deal with and confront emotional disturbances when you may be emotionally disturbed. Somebody out here know what I'm talking about. I've been under that same stress before myself. Christmas time. What you mean you can't come through with that new video game? What do you mean you can't come through with those new pair of sneakers? And sometimes it's hurtful because we want what's best for our children. But today, what was best for little India was not what happened in her family. I have a nine-year-old myself. How India found out about what happened to her family is by looking at TV. She doesn't even understand that her mommy and her daddy and her sisters are no longer with her today for something that she had no idea about what happened, how it happened, but she doesn't even understand really the, the significance of what's going on. And she was in her closet, hiding. How many of you may have gone through that situation when you were in the closet, hiding, because mommy and daddy were going through some situations at home? I know I was a victim of that. And so if it can happen to me, it can happen to any one of us. So we are gathered today to pray for the family, to pray for little India and whatever may happen to her in the years to come, we will have to wrap our arms around this child to make sure that whatever it is that she may be going through, she recognizes that there is a community who loves her, who supports her, who she may not never know. She may not never know any one of your names, but the impact that you are having on her family as care violence groups, as community groups, as elected officials will definitely go acknowledged, supported, and we also have to recognize how important it is for us to put our money where our mouth is. In the New York State Assembly, we just finished our budget with $10 million going to cure violence and CMS groups. Clap it up. That's right. Because those resources will be going to you if you are at the ready and ready to respond when the RFPs and everything comes out. And we need you. We cannot do this without you. And so if nobody else acknowledges the great work that you do, know that we do, know that we love you, 
And I have a great sister who is also here. She flew up in from Washington, D.C. to make sure that she is with the family and with our overall community in this tragedy. So please allow me to introduce to some and to present to others our big sister, none other than Congresswoman Yvette Clark. Thank you, Assemblywoman. To uh, Councilwoman Alika Amphrey Samuel and to Assemblywoman Latrice Walker. These are my sisters. These are women who I know have Brownsville in their DNA, who care deeply about each and every family. And since we are family, beloved, I'm so happy to be with you, to be a witness, and to be a part of this circle. But I'm extremely sad about the circumstances that brought us together. I'm extremely sad that we have a child orphaned right within our own community. That everyone that she saw as those who would protect her are no longer there. And so we have to fill that gap. Let me say to the care, pure violence organizations, this is not about we can't do this without you because you are us. And it makes me so proud to see that you have sacrificed your time, your talent, to organize yourselves to be interrupters. And you may have heard the announcement yesterday from President Biden. And within that announcement, there is a major push, a major initiative, an executive order to fund cure violence organizations. Your work is, doing a, a, is making a difference. If we could point to what you have been doing on the ground as an example of how we can make a difference, how we can serve one another, Joe Biden wouldn't have known nothing about it. And so I just want to thank you. I really, really want to thank you and want to say that, you know what, y'all just started the work because the work has to go deeper. It has to go deeper. It, 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 you know, we, we, we talk about this snitching factor in the community, but we typically talk about it in the context of gangs or crime. We need to be snitching about who needs help. We need to be snitching about who's not feeling well. We need to be snitching so that you can do your job and we can build and strengthen our village. Because when the village isn't well, none of us are well. When India loses her family, I lost my family. And when you can feel in the, in, in the depths of your soul that with every life taken senselessly, life is being drained from you, then you know you got to get up and do something because if the Lord gives you another day, you got to maximize on it. Mm -hmm. And we know that we, we're survivors of COVID to this day, to this day, because COVID is still with us. So with each and every day, we got to maximize on the time that we have. So I want to thank you for, for coming together in this way at Van Dyke. Because the Van Dyke families and communities need us. They need to be able to say, when you walk around, listen, I trust you. I want to, I need this for my family. Who can you hook me up with? Who can you connect me with? I see things going sideways. I need your help. I'm not feeling good. I, I'm feeling like I want to hurt somebody. I feel like I want to hurt myself. Can you help me? That's the work that you are charged with. So let me again just say how blessed we are that so many of you in the community have stepped up, have had the vision to organize and to make it possible for us to reach our people in places where I would not ordinarily go. 
where others would not ordinarily go. And you being there, you are representing for the rest of us. You are representing for our people because we are rescuing our people. And as we come out of this pandemic, we want to continue to ask everyone to stay safe and do all the public health protocols. But we also got to be ready. We can't go back to life the way it was before COVID. If we need training, you need to connect with your elected officials. We will guide you in the right direction. If you need health care, you should be doing that right now. There's no need to be acting shy or acting like your pride is standing in your way. We are here to help. And everyone in this community needs to know we are here to help. Our goal is to make sure that when we say the beloved community, it is indeed the beloved community. God bless you. God keep you. God strengthen you. And now it's my pleasure and my honor to bring up my sister. I call her Sister Soldier 2.0. <laughs> The Honorable Con Assemblywoman, Alika Avery Samuel. I spoke earlier, and so what I want to do right now is ask a representative from every single organization that is part of the CMS groups, every single Cure Violence organization that's out here, and every single organization within CMS. Can you please send the representative? This is why we're here. As elected officials, we go out. I go to City Hall. Latrice go to Albany. The Congressman goes to D.C. And we fight for money and resources. But every single day, y'all are out here on the ground. Every single day. And so with that, I want to say thank you for my position. Thank you so much for all that you do. And I know you're all going to speak. And so now I'm going to pass the mic to Kamara with Elite Learners to take over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to my big brothers and sisters here. I appreciate y'all. We couldn't do this if we don't do it together. So I just want to thank y'all for standing and coming and praying and coming to Brownsville. But my organizations and our organizations and when it comes to fear of violence and providing services, we really come together and that's what's most important. Um, I stand here as a mother of a nine-year-old, so I'm hurt. But I also stand here um, representing today the Brownsville Consortium, which is made up of Brownsville Think Tank Matters, Mel, The Farm, Elite Learners, with a lot of tremendous support from BCJC. And we come to you on behalf of the consortium to let our Brownsville community members know that we appreciate you. We love you for accepting us, for allowing us to come and provide services, for allowing us to organize and heal together. But more importantly, we want you to know that we have resources, that we're here to provide services, we have numbers, that you can call at any time of the night, day, it doesn't matter. And one thing about us as a group, we're here. We work, we work together. 
and we really try to do and extend our arm across Brownsville. We have a lot of support from Bingo and, and you know just the other groups, but we just we just want y'all to know that we are here and we have so many services, reentry, job development, mental health. It, it, we're here, so I can't say it. I can't stress it enough. Please find our organizations, um, look at our websites, and just let's reach out and work. Um, I'm going to make this promise. As a village, we're going to wrap our arms around that nine-year-old. And we're going to make sure that from today on, she has a village. And that each of us are going to rotate and take time and just spend and organize. And, and she'll never, ever have to go without her village. And that's her village from us, her Brownsville village, her, her family. We're all just going to lift them up in prayer and, and follow. So I, I really want you to leave today knowing that we work and, and we, we do what we do so that, you know, we have support and our community members can feel supported. I'm going to introduce Vanessa from Bevo, um, you know, another one of our Brownsville partners who we hold near and dear to our hearts. But then I also want to pass the mic to any one of my other care brothers and sisters that would like to say a few words. So after Vanessa, we can pass the mic to anybody else that would like to say a few words. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I don't think you probably can hear me. So many words have been said today. You know, like Kamara said, my name is Vanessa Johnson, and I represent Bevo, Brownsville, and Violent South. And as I look around and I see so many people here, I'm grateful. This is what family is. You know, they ask you, how do you feel? You know, when it comes to this strategy, this is, I can't even, um, tongue tied, sorry. It's painful because some of us are parents and it hurts. I'm hurting. You know, just like Kamara said, she's a mother of a nine year old, she's hurting. You know, the focus now is just making sure that we do wrap our hands around this little nine year old girl and make sure that she has a family that supports her, loves her, just like we're doing now. The community needs healing, we all need healing. That's important. Take advantage of the resources that's out here. It's okay to talk to someone. People think that it's not, that we're crazy. We're crazy if we don't talk to someone. We all are hurt and we all go through things and trials and tribulations, but know that someone, someone wants to help. Hello, Brownsville. Hello, Brownsville. Hello. All right, because I'm from the star. And I'm all the way over here to let everybody know that we love y'all. We all family, no matter where we from. I'm not only speaking to everybody out here because y'all get it. Y'all out here because y'all get it. I'm talking to the people that's up there, in those houses, in those projects. Those people need to be out here. Y'all get it. Because if you didn't, you wouldn't even be here. This right here... This is the worst. This is the worst. From a family perspective, a mother perspective, sister, brother, auntie, uncle, this is all the way messed up. And we as a community really, really need to get together and hug each other and love each other. We need to let each other know that we are important, that we are somebody. That our hurt hurts other people. Hurt people hurt people. And that's the reason why we're out here, because we're so hurt. Years and years of generational hurt. And I stand with my coworkers, my comrades out here that's on this ground, because we were hurt too. But guess what? We woke up and we said, listen, we're not going to let nobody else hurt how we hurt. We're not going to let nobody else go through what we went through. We're not going to let nobody else spend time in jail. We're not going to let nobody else hurt another family member. We're not going to let nobody else shoot another person. My sister was murdered in 2002. Straight bullet through the window. Talk is projects. Talk is houses. Right now, today, I mentor her killer. We have to come together as a community and understand the trauma and pain on both sides. We lose. We're losing. 
And we're doing it to each other. So we have to heal ourselves. Like they said earlier, we can't do this if we're not together, if we don't have it together. Us in this community that's outside every night while y'all sleep, we help each other. And we need your help too. We cannot do this alone. So everybody that's in these projects, that's listening, for the sound of my voice, that should be out here, we need to help each other. We need to come together as well. And I'm here speaking for Man of Inc. We are 797 Bay Franklin Avenue. Anybody that needs any problem, any situation done in Hope in East New York, we're here. My name is Kevin. God bless you all. Good evening. I am the founder and CEO of GMAC Inc., which stands for Gangsters Making Astronomical Community Changes. We are a 501c3 nonprofit that focuses on gun violence from a public health perspective. I'm formerly incarcerated, shifted my mindset over 10 plus years ago, and decided to be part of the solution and no longer part of the problem. That's why I founded my organization. I realized that my past pain and trauma that we're talking about was not just going to be pain and trauma for me. It was going to be experience. It was going to be education. And when I formed GMAC back in 2012, there were people who looked at me, laughed at me. They were homies who didn't understand what I was doing. But I kept going and I kept fighting and I kept pushing until GMAC became something that was in my community. Because I knew that it was a purpose that had to be there. And I say that because we talk about our event class, we talk about the money that's coming from our president. That is a test and example of the work that the people are putting in in the streets. That is the test for those late night hours when you know you're having that conversation with that person who wanted to shoot somebody and you're helping him or her to not make that bad choice. That is a proof of work. So I'm speaking to those who are in the field that's doing this work and the people who need to be in the field doing this work. You don't have to be incarcerated to be experienced to be credible to your community. If you've been living in Brownsville your whole life and you had a job and you've never been incarcerated, you've never gangbanged, you are a credible messenger that we need because you can show them how to navigate all of that stuff that we fell victim to. We need you to step up. You ain't got to be incarcerated. You ain't got to be tough to be part of this work. And I'm saying that because everybody knows that somebody is going through something and they don't help them enough. That man was going through something, but we didn't help him enough. Somebody knew him. Even nobody listened, or nobody cared, or nobody believed him, or nobody followed up enough to give him the support to prevent him from taking those lives. That is the work that we do. Prevention. So when you talk about a president who believes in adding money to this work, he's adding money to prevention. When they add money to prevention, you will see the murders decrease. This is what we must focus on. Prevention, not arguing, not looking at what happened, but looking at what we did not do to prevent it from happening in our community. That is what our organization want to continue to be recognized for. We want to educate our young people on how to be part of the solution. They're walking around here, they don't even see this conversation as something they should be part of. We need to do more. So as an organization that focuses on conflict resolution, we come out to support any shooting response that happens in our community. This is what the crisis management system represents. 
The services that we provide are also the same services that these organizations provide. We are downtown Brooklyn in Fort Greene. We have an office in East Flatbush on Kings Highway in Church. So even if you're in Brownsville and you know that you can talk to somebody and lead learners, and we'll work together to help you deal with those conflicts. We are not in competition with each other in this field. We are working together. So I'm sharing this with sites as well. If you hear of a neighborhood that you know that your neighborhood is, your, co your community is not familiar with, reach out to another site. It might be a homie over there that somebody know that can stop that from happening. Let's really put our work where we need to put our work, and that's in these buildings and in these streets. Thank you. Rest in peace to that family. There's a family outside of that little girl that is hurting. If you know who is related to that family, reach out to them. Not just the little girl. There are family members who are grieving right now that we don't even know about. And they may take out of somebody else. So if you know somebody that knows that family, have somebody reach out to them. If they need to talk to me, because I know how it feels to have a loved one murdered, I don't talk about it. I'm still dealing with it. My little brother was shot and killed in the Urban Plaza five years ago coming up this May. This murderer, alleged murderer, still sits on Rikers Island. But I continue to do this work because it's not about me. It's about being an example of change. Thank you. Stay safe. Peace. Good evening, everybody. I've been living in Brownsville for 45 years. A lot of people know me. As the brother said, I was on the wrong side of the fence. I was sister that was robbed and killed and raped when I was running the streets during the war. My mother prayed that I turned. My mother didn't get to see the transition that I made. I'm the founder of Brownsville King County Matters. I still have family and lives in these projects out here. I have that building, Riverdale, Rockets, Rockets. I don't have to fix it back. I made it to move out of Brownsville. I got to look at what's behind me. So I'm still in this community to see a change so my family members can see a victim and don't be a victim of crime. It's about us coming together, supporting one another, not only through these organizations, but as a community, that's what we need to do. And, you know, I just want to agree so we can you know, come together and continue doing this work as a community, not as an organization. Peace and blessings, everybody. How are you doing? My name is Tony Brown from the Brownsville Community Justice Center. Um, we work in a partnership with everybody out here, willing to work with anybody, willing to work with us. I grew up out here. I'm from Lexington Hills Projects. I currently reside in Brownsville Housing. It's something that I grew up hearing a lot my whole life. Y'all heard it too. I, I put a name to it. It's called the Scared Black Mentality. And I feel that led to the downfall of our, a lot of our neighborhoods. People out here. From young to old, scared to speak to anybody in the neighborhood about anything, man. Scared to tell them to stop going wrong. Scared to tell them to go home, go in the house. But when I was coming up, all of that was valid. Anybody could tell us anything. And if you went against that, you was going to get cut when you went in the house and probably cut on the street, meaning beat, you know what I mean? Now, what I, what I think and believe needs to stop happening is people have to stop being quiet. Just like the brother said when he was up here, somebody recognized that brother had issues. A lot of y'all don't know my face. Because I don't go out on the street like that. Like he said, I'm from the middle of this. But I've never been locked up for nothing that was my fault outside of some marijuana. You know what I mean? I never did no state bills, but I come from this. I know it's out here. I might know my aunt wishes for now that just passed a few months back. You should always be on the block. That's my aunt. And it was never about she didn't have nobody. She suffered from mental illness. Regardless of all the help we attempted to give her, she chose to live her life the way she lived it. 
We, the, the, that's not to say that we didn't attempt to get her help. We went up to Brookdale Hospital to get the people to stop letting her back out on the street that she was going to hurt herself. We got to do that for each and everybody around us. Not only our family members, our neighbors, we got to be checking up on our elderly, people with mobility issues. We got to be the person that, there's so many people in the city, all of us have come across somebody who can recognize when their mind is not right. It's not to start making fun, doing wild. I see somebody walk on a block like that and people start making fun and have to, have to jump, they'll be scared to jump in there. It's like, yo, don't make fun of her, don't say nothing to her. Don't try to go back and forth with her. Don't try to go hand to hand with her. You know something is wrong. You get no props for that. Same time these gangsters, fake gangsters out here. Running around with two and three mad guns to kill women and children. We need to recognize who our true enemy is, who the true enemy is, and who our true family is. And treat each one of them accordingly. As we should, man. Peace and blessings to everybody else. Stay safe and healthy. Okay. We have to continue on the speakers. I know that we all are going to continue to speak with one another. And we all want to let you stand up and say it. So. First of all, I need to ask permission for the elders to speak. I guess y'all can see I'm not the youngest really up here. And there's a reason. Because over 40 years ago, I was from Atlanta, Georgia, when I was a kid. And it was my promise that I was going to come back home to my neighborhood and do all I can to do. Now, some of these Young people behind me. I remember when they were very young. And they were doing what they were doing. But I need to say this, they always have respect for community. They was the ones that would see the ladies and cover their hands or ask them to carry the bag. I want to know what happened to that. I want to know why now we recklessly shooting each other and killing each other in the street. I want to know why. I can still speak to my classmates of class of 76. But kids graduated last year. They're no longer here. Now, this is about to be a movement going on. I understand this guidelines for what we do. But see, the old folks got together. We were never scared of them, too. Now, we don't do the best we can to talk to them and let them know that this is not the norm. It's not the norm for me to wake up and hear that a whole family is wiped out and there's a baby walking around and hiding in the closet. But when you're a man that loves a woman that nurtures a child, this should not happen to a lady. For all those that it's all up in the building, y'all know what we do. Y'all see it. Y'all ask it. We deliver. Deliver with us. Talk to your children. Check your room. Let's get together. We should never be always meeting like this, crying over something that should not be happening. They know that they're supposed to bury me and not me burying them. And until we get these principles to put these rooms back in the street, we can continue to meet like this. But I'm telling you, I am one of many that say enough is enough. I love y'all. And I'll go to the end for y'all. But we, we're going to have to stop very much. Sure. And I respect y'all and I love y'all and thank y'all so much for giving me the opportunity to speak. Over here, Chad, yo, she no more on vicious. You already know vicious, know everybody everywhere. She used to hang out with Verdal. Yeah, man. This is the Officer John. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs>
You have the basement, you have the attic. And each room does something specific. But they all comprise the house. We're saying to this community, we feel your pain. We know what you're going through. We invite you to come to the house. Come to the room. Each organization here, come into the room and get what you need. The Bible says if there's amongst you with any of the gifts that the Lord thy God has given you, close not your hand, but open your hand wide and give unto them that which is sufficient for their need. We are the house. God bless you. Put your hands together for what we have this witness. Amen. Not only are we fighting domestic violence, gun violence, and mental health, not only are we going to do all this stuff, there is one other thing that we are fighting inside. And that's the other thing. As a pastor, I want to let you know girls get vaccinated. To get this information from the Let me tell you why I say Every day. Every day. 5 days a week. From 8 to 5. I'm standing next to them talking to family of people who are dying from COVID. Oh, this is what out here. In addition to gunshot, in addition to stabbing, COVID is taking us out. One by one. Go get vaccinated. There's nothing worse than seeing a person in a room that's full of air. I said air, and they can't get in. They sit there struggling to breathe in a room full of air. Go get vaccinated. Standing next to me is our chief patient experience officer, Nicole Francois. But we here, Brookdale is here for you. Come get vaccinated. Don't play with it. Don't think you're not Superman. You're not Superwoman. I saw a young lady bring her mother in, no underlying health condition. Brought her in at five in the afternoon. They told her, they said, go home, get her some clothes, come back. She came back five o'clock next morning, mother's dead. COVID will kill you. COVID will kill you. And before I pray, I'm gonna let Ms. Francois say something. We're gonna pray for the family, we're gonna pray for you. I thank God for you, but go. Vaccinated. I just want to say hello, family. Can I please get a hello back? <laughs> the reason why I call you family is because, yes, I work at Brookfield Hospital. Yes, I have cried, tears, with mothers, fathers, sisters, and aunts, of people who have lost a son, a aunt. Uh, uncle, this is gun violence. I want to say, Bronzeville, you need to stop. I can't tell you. I have been told enough of what you think you may know. I want to say that I work with the survivors, and they have done nothing but been helpful. But I need to know when are we? When are we going to do something? When are we going to do when are you going to do something? I'm going to take off my shoes and I take shoes my heels. Shoes uh, behind my desk and come out here into the community and show you that we are not a community hospital. We're a hospital for the community. I don't think yes, you're going to be a hospital. It's just a bit of our organization. Okay. Oh. 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 Oh.
Eternal God, our Father, we come this afternoon, God, after speeches and encouragement, God, and we thank you so much for that. God, we pray for each of the organizations that are represented here today. We pray for your people. We pray for this community. God, we pray for that young lady who has to grow up without a family. God, we pray for peace. We pray for understanding, but most of all, God, we pray for courage and strength. Courage to keep our heads up, strength to plow through the violence, the domestic violence, the mental illness. God, I pray that resources will be made available. We pray that resources will be made available for each of these groups. God, that they can continue to lift and move people to a new height. We pray for these buildings these people live in. We pray for this community, the streets in which we walk on. God, I pray that we will not have a violent summer. I come against it now in the name of Jesus. We will not have a violent summer. God, I pray that you will increase awareness of mental illness, domestic violence. Help us, God, to help ourselves. Help us to be Courageous enough to not turn away, not to run, not to be silent, God, but we sound the alarm. We speak out. We pray again, God, for every life that has been touched. And God, when everything goes back, we go to our normal business. I still pray for that young lady who has to walk through life and try to make sense of it. God, when she gets old enough, God, I pray that you will give her the answer. And that she'll be able to handle and mature enough to know that, God, you're still in control. We bless you now. We glorify you. Take us home. Watch over us as we travel. Put your hedge of protection around us, God. Keep all hurt, harm, and danger away from us. And, God, allow us to arrive at our homes and places of, of rest and find things peaceful and in order. God, when we lay down tonight to rest, let us rest well, to arise and see new mercy in the morning. This is our prayer. It is in Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. amen. Come on, say amen. 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 Come on, give God some praise like you know who he is. I'm alive so it's time to die. I'm from when it's time to ride. And if you try to hurt me, 